we're going to be looking at graphing a system of equations to find a solution. We start off with this example and I've already given you the graph and these are the equations so we won't really need the calculator for this one. We just want to see how it works and then we'll see how we can use a calculator to find the answers as well. So when we had these two equations remember that um, this one right here is going to be y is equal to negative one half x plus six and this equation right here is going to be y is equal to one half x minus four. Every point on here is a, satisfies this equation. Okay and let's come circle this in green so that I can say that every point on here satisfies this equation. Again, every point on this line satisfies this equation. So when we're looking for a solution, we want to know what satisfies both equations. And you can see that they have one point in common right here at the intersection point. So it's an ordered pair. And the ordered pair would be x is 10 and y looks to be 1. Now let's see how we could actually do that in our calculator. So y is equal to, so this first one will say negative 0.5x, because 0.5 is the same thing as 1 half, plus 6, and then enter. And my second equation, instead I'm going to put 1 divided by 2 times x. But when in doubt, put a fraction in parentheses, and then minus 4. Okay, you can write it either way. And we want to look at the graph. However, if you look at our graph, it's 10, 1. If we, I'm in a standard window, I believe, when I graph. Okay, to find that intersection point, you do second and then trace. Put it there so you can come back to it. Second, trace. And then you choose five because it says intersect and that's what we want to know. Where do they intersect? So you can choose five and then you're just going to press enter three times. So press enter, enter, enter and I'm going to get an error and the reason why is it's right on the edge of my screen and it doesn't like it have intersections right at the edge of your screen so I can just come in here and change a window it didn't work so I'm going to choose the window and I didn't I was over at 10 and yes that's my answer is at 10 but it doesn't again want it to be right on the edge so I just need to go a little further I'm going to let my x max be 15 instead of 10 now when I graph I should be able to see my intersection not right on the edge. And then again, second, trace, option five, and then enter, enter, enter. And the intersection it tells me is 10, 1. Just like we had here. Let's look at another example. In this example, we're going to want to use our calculators because we don't want to have to graph it by hand. This one's great for the calculator. In fact, I can come back in here and put that one in here right away. Clear up my equation and I can put P is equal to 2M in our case and the calculator is going to say 2X minus 12. But the second equation, enter and clear before I forget, the second equation isn't P equal. So I have to solve for P. I have to solve for the same variable. So I've got to solve for p, which means I'm going to add 3m to both sides. So I'm going to have negative 17 plus 3m. And that's what I want to put in my calculator. So negative 17 plus 3x in our case. Now we can look at our graph and see if we can find the intersection point. There's one line. There's the second line. And I can see my intersection point. So I'm ready to do second trace five, enter, enter, enter. And you would want to make a sketch of your graph. So here's my graph 
and they look something like this and something like this and this point right here then is my solution which says 5 negative 2 okay and what, what do you think we're looking for in our table remember they have to be the exact same point for both equations so this is the x for both equations and I need my y's to be exactly the same so here you see it y, x is 5, y is negative 2 here and y is negative 2 here and we know that that is going to be our solution y's are the same for x equal 5 here I have a y equal so that's great to put in my calculator this one's not so great but I want to show you another little trick let's solve for y so we're going to have negative 3y equal to negative 12 and I have to subtract the x so minus x and the quickest easiest way to get this in your calculator is just to divide everything by negative 3 but you gotta remember to put all of this in parentheses so we're gonna come in here put our equation in and 1 divided by 3 this time x it's going to take 1 and divide it by 3 and then multiply by x so I don't have to have those parentheses plus the 4 and that's my top equation now this time I have to have the parentheses and it would do our division first before we did, did the addition or subtraction but we want it to add and subtract first so negative 12 minus x close the parenthesis and then divided by negative 3 so it's going to do the top part and then divide by negative 3 we can look at our graph and see if it fits a standard window and it does and you're looking at that and you're probably saying wait it only showed us one line well let's go look at our table for a second and see if we really do have one line or not quick way to tell if we have one line when you look at a table notice all my y1's and y2's are exactly the same so this is the same line if I go back and look at my graph so I can sketch it it looks something like this okay if I had taken negative 12 and divided by negative 3 that would have been positive 4 and if I'd taken my negative x and divided it by negative 3 that would have been one-third x which you'll notice is the same as the top equation alright let's look at another one set these are nice equations there's a point I want to make here so I made them nice equations 3x plus 7 enter and 3x minus 3 enter and I'm going to graph them but these are parallel we will find out they're never going to cross so they have no solution and if you look in the table you will notice that this is 7 to negative 3 10 to 0 there's always a difference of 10 13 and 3 there's a difference of 10 16 and 6 a difference of 10 they're never getting any closer they're always the same distance away so the y's are the same distance from each other so let's make a summary we can have a graph that has one point in common we can have a graph that has infinite solutions or all points because they're the same line and we can have a system that has no solution 
because they are parallel.